So the dust is now settled. Uh, there's no longer any crying about Mortal Kombat. It's now an established game in a sense. Its community has adopted it. And a lot of people have moved on. And I think this is probably time for me to be able to just speak on how good of a game I think they've made. Now, the one thing I would say is the so-called microtransactions were just the were just a terrible idea from the start. So Warner Brothers, you, you kind of pretended like you learned your lesson with Shadow of War. But somehow y'all still try to get that in there and get a big grind wall going to encourage people to spend real money for a fully priced game. That's just a whole bunch of nonsense. Stop trying to push the envelope. Just make a good game and it's going to sell copies upon copies upon copies, especially today in the digital world. You know, it's not like y'all need the money anyways from chump change video games. Jeez, it's just it looks greedy and it looks bad. But other than that, you know, the game is a solid game. Um, a, a lot of people made a, a lot of noise about the art style and the dress code, talking about how some people don't care about video games. All they care about is, you know, trying to critique things that they really don't care about in video games. And some people wanted the ladies to be scantily dressed and said things like, but you have the men not wearing shirts and you have the women wearing high heels, blah, 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 blah. Honestly, fighting game community does not care much about what people wear in fighting games. To be very honest, go look at all the people who are playing these fighting games. They are concerned about combos. They're concerned about gameplay, footsies, um, frame data, all that good stuff that makes them better at the game. And this is, I think, generally why the community have embraced the game because there are not a lot of fighting games out there. Um, it's a very small niche. And once you find a community, you want to market to them. And I think any gaming company that tries to market to a community and doesn't do right by them is really setting themselves up for some failure. So I, I would just say out there, I don't think that that was a fun practice, but they did mitigate and give everybody a fun 500,000 coin gifts, blah, 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 whatever. Maybe they, it seems like, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. But let's talk about story of this game. So I think the developers answered the call in their story writing. And some people that talked about, you know, art and all that stuff, I wonder where they are not appreciating how artistically done the story for Mortal Kombat 11 was. So the developers had done some, had gone in a direction in MKX. A lot of people were not really happy about it, making Liu Kang the bad guy, um, killing him and making him a revenant, all this crazy stuff kind of stared up some people's uh, concerns in the community because Liu Kang is supposed to be the good guy of Mortal Kombat. Even though you have a lot of characters where they've developed different story arcs, Liu Kang is supposed to be that guy that stands out. And somehow he became he becomes a bad guy in MKX, Mortal Kombat 10. And everyone is just, you know, people who are really invested in the story. Many of them aren't really happy. So in MK11, what they did was they set up a plot that allowed for them to actually bend the time rules and do all kinds of fun stuff and eventually make for a coherent story that still brings out their, the champion of Mortal Kombat to be the champion of the entire story. And so they they do it in such a very seamless way. A lot of people said they thought the story didn't make any sense. And I'm looking at them thinking to myself, what? What do you mean the story doesn't make any sense? The precedent was already set. And that's the thing. It's like everybody just wanted to talk and say some things were kind of cheesy and blah, 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 blah. No, that's a whole load of trash because I bet you these same people are going to go watch some movie where people are traveling through time and be like, oh, it was such a good movie. But somehow in Mortal Kombat, that's actually done. And everybody else is saying things like, yeah, some parts of the story don't really make sense. Like, what does it make sense in the story? Tell me. Um, do you not know what fiction is? Fiction allows for you to be able to develop and do things like that. And so a fictional world where the so-called keeper of time, Kronika, is bending time and trying to make things fit her agenda is where all of this is set in. So time finds itself in a collision on a collision course. And a lot of things from the past and from the future and from the present are all happening in order to give us what the final end plot is going to be. And so if there's anything at all, at all that you can say doesn't make sense is the fact that some things are inconsistent. Um, very, And so that will probably be the only thing if you want to say that. But what you can point as as inconsistent really has to and will surprise me but let me just point it out one of the inconsistent things and i have to point it out is when sonya blade gets in a fight with Jax. i said Jax, sorry kano 
uh, the jerk, the biggest jerk in the world, and they do a good job making him more of a jerk, and they put two of him in the in the whole thing, is when he tries to, in a sense, threaten her, and he has the other Kano, the past Kano, or the the yeah, or whatever it is, he has one of the time bound Kanos, and the other time Kano is doing something else, and she just goes ahead and just you know shoots him in the head. Ugh, it was kind of weird, and he, he affected the other Kano immediately. But at the same time, down the story, Jax gets to fight with Jax, and every time he punches Jax, it doesn't in any way affect him. So I think that was a little inconsistent, or maybe there were rules where if Jax was fighting Jax, then it doesn't really make a difference if he was inflicting the pain on himself, whatever. But that's the only side that I saw something that was a little off. But regarding the character development regarding the the arches you would have had to know some uh, mortal combat stuff but it didn't necessarily make it where you had to depend on the entire story there was enough dialogue there were enough um voice acting scenes and a, a lot of good things that made the game to just stand out for a fighting game you know this thing had such a good story in my opinion and i think netherrealm studios needs to get a good a thumbs up for this because if you look at some other games that have come out in the in the past few months like jump force the story was just bland and annoying i played that game and i even didn't get to the end are you kidding me that was just poorly done from a story progression perspective it was just super annoying but here you have a game where as the chapters are transitioning in some instances, it is so seamless. It's well done cinematically. And I just wanted to say that this is a very solid part of the game. If you are not a fighting game person and you want a decent story, just take NetherRealm's uh, games and play their story. They're not like, you know, anything great, but they provide you a three, four hour story. You can play it on easy where you just kick the bad guy when you're when you're in a fight and just walk through the progression. I know fighting games are not supposed to be, you know, some big, you know, story mode, but it's nice to have them from time to time. And the last fighting game that I played that had a decent story mode was Tekken 7, but it wasn't anything even, in a sense, remarkable. I mean, if you compare if you compare Mortal Kombat 11 to Tekken 7, compared to Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite's the stories, uh, compared to Jump Force, it is the superior story-driven uh, narrative for a fighting game. It is better than all the others that I've seen out there. So in that category, it's just a better game. Uh, and that's not even to go into the fighting. Now, yes, when we go into the fighting, they're all different games. And so this is where every game would have to be judged based on its own merits and its own little category that it is. Because Mortal Kombat is different from Tekken and it's different from Capcom and different from Street Fighter. But these are the things that we look at on say, OK, how are we going to compare it on par with other fighting games uh, in that genre? So. The game is actually solid. It's a better game than many people would have envisioned, especially with all the controversy surrounding it, which now that every all the controversy is gone, the, the fans and that community can now enjoy their game in peace and quiet, because I think that's what always happens. Everybody finds noise to make and there are trends going on on YouTube and you start to see a lot of YouTube videos that want to follow and pick up the trend. It's just what YouTubers do. I mean, I'm a YouTuber myself, so I know the way it works in a sense, but Sometimes I feel like many times a fair shot's not given to what is really going on and to the quality of the product. And so that is that for story. So let's look at fighting. Let's look at how the community sees um, the game. Now, currently, the, the fighting uh, community around Mortal Kombat is, is in a mixed spot. Um, there are people calling for nerfs on some characters. There are people calling for buffs on some characters. Um, while, while there are other people who've played, you know, fighting games for a while who are saying just learn and play the game the way it is. But what a lot of people cannot necessarily complain about is the entire gameplay structure in a sense. They're very, there's a very small minority in the community that says, you know, the gameplay is not necessarily the best. But when you go back and compare it to Mortal Kombat X, you definitely see the four year difference in advancement from the studio, especially when they made Injustice 2. So if you want to actually say the game, how close is this game to something else that the studio has made? You're going to have to look back to 2017 when Injustice 2 was released. I, I think so, because if you look at the way the victory celebrations are, it's a lot more epic than uh, it was in Mortal Kombat X. It's more Injustice 2-y, the way they will maybe uh, yell at the end or the way it will do a cinematic that follows that Injustice pattern. 
And so that's how I see that. But, you know, that that aside, uh, there are some who say the gameplay is not really that great, but I think the gameplay is actually better than Mortal Kombat X. Uh, before the game came out, I wanted to play MK11, so I picked up Mortal Kombat X for very little, and I started practicing, you know, playing here and there, trying to see how well I could get, and if I could kind of get that dexterity to be able to, you know, do some combos and to be able to learn uh, specific move sets and kind of the things that you learn. And I would say that MK11 just brings better graphics, better movement, and better animation overall to the game. Uh, it's not as fast as MKX. Mortal Kombat X was a very, very fast game. Uh, and Mortal Kombat 11 is fast, but there's just that one split second slowdown in the game that makes it very unique in its own right. And so regarding gameplay, the game is just solid in its own sense. I mean, you can't take Mortal Kombat out of its... Mortal Kombat, um, you know, little pocket and go compare with some other fighting game out there. It's very unique. It's very standard in its own sense. So what you can do is compare it to the other Mortal Kombat games. Now, if I go down the line to MK9, a lot of hardcore Mortal Kombat fans will swear that MK9 was the better Mortal Kombat game in a long time. And to that, I would say, I don't think so. Because I didn't, one, I didn't play Mortal Kombat 9 much. So I guess maybe that disqualifies me in a sense to make that comparison. But I do own Mortal Kombat 9. Um, and to be very honest, when I look at both games, Mortal Kombat 9 is actually a very well designed game. I mean, very polished game. But there's some things that are just so, in a sense, modern that I think I enjoy about Mortal Kombat 11 than I do Mortal Kombat 9. Um, so if you look at the way I started looking at these games, I, I, I just bought Injustice because I'm a big DC games fan. I play Batman games. So when I saw Injustice, oh, fighting game with, you know, my favorite superheroes, I really enjoyed the way the graphics look, the sound development, the animations and all those things, even though there are people who have some problems with the animations, please forgive me. Um, and so when I started to go back into the Mortal Kombat, into NetherRealm's, you know, catalog and go back to the Mortal Kombat games, I was like, wow, this is like me going to black and white. So as much as the OG fans would appreciate those older games, I, I guess I can't appreciate the games in that sense. So in a sense, my vision is kind of clouded That's in that sense. So permit me, um, I would say, for those of you who are hardcore fans, to go this direction and to say these things, because that is where I'm coming from. So I'm not dismissing Mortal Kombat 9. I'm just saying from the direction that I came to actually find out about Mortal Kombat, like everything more about Mortal Kombat 9, I would say definitely... I prefer MK11 much more. Now, my history of Mortal Kombat 2 has been from the Super Nintendo days, uh, from when I used to write the moves in the notebook and kind of just, you know, go to the arcades and all that good stuff. So I do have some history with the game, but I never necessarily played much of it past Mortal Kombat 4. And I had that on my PC, and I remember beating the game with Tanya. And I would all I would just do is her spinning kick back and forth and back and forth and beat every boss and beat everybody. That was so much fun to just do because it was really easy, really short and sweet to beat all the towers and just, you know, see all that good stuff in the game. And so that's kind of how I really enjoy Mortal Kombat. But now trying to get into a fighting game is something I've told myself that I'll try to do. And it's very hard. You know, you get brain freeze when you're in a match fighting with somebody and you find yourself button mashing sometimes. <laughs> sometimes you find yourself actually doing good combos and you're like, wow, I can't believe I did that. Because, you know, you have to practice, which is the first side of things. And I think the practice options are just phenomenal. You get all kinds of fun stuff that will improve your gameplay in exponentially. Honestly, I, I'm, I can tell you that. I just finished beating the story mode a few hours ago, but I've been practicing since the game came out. I bought the game day one, and all I've done is just practice and practice and practice. And with a game like this, the practicing side makes you better. It just does. You spend It's what we call labbing in, in fighting games. You go to the lab. I'm, 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 actually I'm actually a trained scientist. And when you go into the lab to practice, when you go into the lab, you're making and testing things. It's what you're doing. And so I, when I heard the word lab being used in the FGC community, I was so, I almost cried. <laughs> you know, it's just one of those things where it's like, man, this is actually serious. You got to, you got to put in the time and practice. If all you have is three hours a week to play, you better spend two hours of that time practicing. If all you got is 20 minutes to play the game. You better spend 17 minutes practicing. That's the way fighting games are. The more you practice, the better you get and the more you're encouraged to practice. And so 
with in-game mechanics that actually help you to understand what frame data is and help you understand what flawless blocking and what getups are and all these things the tutorial is just so good that even the new player can pick up the game and not feel like they have a huge curve that's already there a fighting game already presents a curve to every every gamer you know if you're not somebody who's trained themselves in fighting games you pick up a new one you're going to have to deal with the curve and so with the way the game is structured it does help the beginner friendly person and also allows for the pro or somebody who has more of this that kind of game time to excel as well so i've seen myself you know actually start to enjoy fighting games because i enjoy them they're very they're perfect for you know, somebody who's a casual gamer, because you can play a few games and be done. You're not stuck there trying to play a whole bunch of hours and you can't pause. It's not like a live service game uh, in the traditional sense. If you lose a few games, you know, you take an L, you go home. If you get some wins, you know, you get some wins, you know, you, you shut you shut down your game and you're done. And so I would say definitely that work. Now, let's go to some qualms that I had. The PC version is what I play. And so I noticed yesterday on the PC version playing the story, there was a lot of voice desync issues. Now, I don't know if that was from my graphics card or from my computer. So what I'll try to do is I'll probably go back and play some of the chapters that did that because I recorded the footage um, and see what's going on right now. The footage that you're seeing is footage from the game, but you're not hearing any audio. But man, if you were playing the game, then you would have been like, whoa, that was that was said two minutes ago and your lips just moved to it. You know, something like that. So that's one of the issues. And then a few things on launch that necessarily didn't make them seem like the they had much patience or they had much of the PC community and in their interest. I don't know why. I feel like, you know, the developers could do better to make sure that the game is of the same quality when it's released on all the platforms that it releases in. But what more can I say? If you want to play Mortal Kombat, you have something, um, you know, that you find attractive about fighting games, then it's one game that I would say give a try. Um, you're not going to get super good in like three hours, by the way. <laughs> the learning curve is more like three months in any fighting game anyways. And three months of hardcore practice. I mean, spending your days off and putting your time in just practicing, 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 learning what it's like to do all the fun stuff and, you know, watching videos and watching professional players play because that's usually the attractive point. When you see a professional player do some really fun stuff it makes you kind of want to go back and see if you can actually do those things and you know you can take satisfaction in being able to do them maybe even in practice and maybe you can't do them in a match that's still fine you can do it in practice and you can still do it you know it does you're not playing to make money like a professional player is so you can enjoy the casual side of the game anyways mortal kombat is a good game it's a good buy for anybody who wants to you know put their invest invest money and time in it it's it's a game that i would definitely recommend for a fighting game or for mortal kombat fans and that's all i have to say uh, about the game i tried my best not to spoil things for you guys and i just wanted to put my opinions out there thank you very much for listening and watching if you like the long form content and you stayed till this point please go ahead and subscribe for more of this on the channel and I guess I will see you in the next video. Peace.